Formula One returns to Kuala Lumpur for the Malaysian Grand Prix. That's what many are suggesting could in fact be the final ever Grand Prix here in Malaysia, as the contract to host Grand Prix runs out in the end of the race on Sunday, and many sources are actually suggesting that contract negotiations between Liberty Media and the track owners actually broke down and there will not in fact be a contract renewal, so this could be the final ever Malaysian Grand Prix and a final opportunity for Mercedes to impress main title sponsors Petronas with Orlando Alonso and Pascal Verlein stating they're more motivated than ever to take the victory in what could be the final showing. And this meant that Mercedes were first out on track, putting in as many laps as they can to get everything right, try and get all the settings and setups correct for the race on Sunday, Fernando Alonso topping practice one and practice two, with Pascal Verlein eventually topping practice three. Toyota brings some all new redesigned side pods for this race meeting and for the rest of the season, as Kobayashi has retired from the last two races due to overheating issues with his Toyota power unit and despite more drag, hoping that the high consistency will bring more good points for the team. Torosso have now confirmed that they have signed both drivers now for next season, but they're keeping tight lips on who the two drivers will be at the Italian team, leading many to believe that Red Bull have also signed both their drivers for next season. Adrian Sussel comes to what is expected to be his final race in his Formula 1 career, unless he manages to find a driver at another team next season. This will be his final race before Thomas Aron takes over. Fernando Alonso impresses Petronas on what could be the final showing, taking pole position, with jean luc Verne, the championship leader, completing the front row as the leader of the Ferraris. Daniel Kvyat with an excellent lap will start P3 for Red Bull, with Josh Chirio once again starting from fourth in the BMW Williams. Sebastian Vettel starts from fifth in the second of the Ferraris, with Lewis Hamilton the lead Mercedes starting from 6th. Lewis Hamilton's teammate Kobayashi will start from 7th in the second of the Toyotas, with Nico Hulkenberg joining him on the 4th row starting from 8th as the lead runner. Robbie Kibitzer drops to 9th after a 5 place penalty for a gearbox change after qualifying, and he's joined on row 5 by Lance Stroll as the lead of the Haas BMWs. Very poor lap from Pascal Verlein, to see the German line up 10 places behind his teammate, and he's joined on row 6 by Mick Schumacher in the second of the Hasses. Carlos Sainz will start from the 13th as the lead of the Torosos. Rio Hayante managing to get his McLaren Honda 3 into Q2 to line up in 14th. Daniel Ricciardo will start from 15th in the second of the Renaults, with Pierre Gazzi getting knocked out in Q1, only lining up 16th in the second of the Torosos. Giovinazzi will start from 17th as the lead Sauber, Joined on row 9 by Carmen Jorda in the second of the McLaren Hondas. Adrian Sussel starts from 19th in what could be his final race. Max Verstappen starts from the back of the grid after a water leak with his power unit prevented him from setting a lap time. Hey guys, Tara here. Welcome back to Uni 1, this time round 15 for Season 4, the Malaysian Grand Prix. And what could be the final ever Malaysian Grand Prix? Maybe if you did miss the race last time out at Singapore, definitely do go and check that one out. Some the race has some crazy implications on the championship and could be a, a potential championship deciding race come the end of the season. Now looking at Kibitza starting all the way down in P9 with a 5 place penalty, so Kibitza did qualify in P4 so he would have started ahead of us so Kibitza has got some good pace and to see if he can make his way through past the Toyotas and Nico Hulkenberg. Also looking down at Pascal Vela starting way down in P11, not the f well definitely not where Pascal Vela wanted to be, of course Vela also topping P3 so we know that Mercedes does have some pace. So all that Adrian Sutil on what could be his final ever Grand Prix, he's had a pretty decent career at Sauber. Unfortunately he's still not managed to find that elusive podium position, but I imagine you want to put on a strong showing here in what could be his final ever Grand Prix. Now coming back onto us, starting from P4, pretty much where we started every race the second half of the season, apart from Singapore, now lining up just behind Daniel Kvyat, putting an excellent lap in that rebel, because that rebel with that excellent chassis aerodynamics, and of course with the, with the nature of this circuit, with that middle sector being much always high speed corners, the Rebels do find a lot of time through there. He's just on the straights where, of course, where they're lacking with that Cosworth power unit. That's why in front of the back rows of Castle lined up now, Carmen Jordan, the two Salbers, and Max Stappen right to the back of the grid. And then we can come to the Fire Red Lights. And now coming to the Fire Red Lights for the start of the Malaysian Grand Prix. 
Lights out and away we go for what could be the final level Malaysian Grand Prix. Looks like a good start from Fernando Alonso from the front row. Also a good start from our teammate Robbie Kubica as well. Pulling out Alonso to go four wide now with some of the cars in the midfield. Now going all good power down in turn one. So down the crest. I can get up now into P2. Try and go make a look of the inside there. Fernando Alonso. Alonso is just a bit too far ahead. Into turn one. They're still going side by side now with John O'Gvern and Dan O'Gvern. Of course the two teammates from last season. Now going to Kivir on the inside. Getting forced onto the grass there by John O'Gvern. Vern being very aggressive off the start of this Grand Prix. Now Kivir trying to hold it on the inside. Of the championship leader, John Eric Van. Going up now into turn three. Can Van hold it around the outside? It's like Van's actually getting from there. I've done a caveat. We're going to start our time with Spassi Vettel. Force Vettel onto the curb. He gets across the line. And we sweep right around the outside. Of the German Nathalie Lacky for no, Robbie Kubica going side by side now with the lead Toyota of Lewis Hamilton getting side by side now through the same section. Hamilton trying to hold it around the outside of Robbie Kubica. But Kubica just managed to force his way up the inside. So a good start there from Robbie Kubica. A start that he really, really needed to make. And looking back to us, we've managed to actually keep it in P4. So. Despite not the best of starts, we managed to keep it in our starting position for once, so one of the better starts we've had in this season. But now you can try and keep with Daniel Kvyat, because through, through this middle sector, that Rebel's superior chassis aero, aerodynamics and the, the superior chassis compared to what we have on our Williams. They've got Daniel Kvyat, of course, they're going to pull away through this middle sector, but coming up down to the start finish straight, of course, this back straight we're coming up to now, where we're just getting leaves and bounds on that Red Bull course with the just the difference in pure straight line speed, pure power between our two power units. We've got Spassi Vettel still looking very racy right there behind us, of course. Not much difference between the Ferrari power units and the BMW power units, so Vettel is going to be a lot harder to keep behind than we sh what it should be for us to try and get past down a Kvyat. Now getting a good look from the rear diffuser of our BMW winners, getting a good run out of the final corner, actually leaving behind Sebastian Vettel. Vettel not getting the best run out of the final corner, now getting in the line of the stream on the back of Daniel Kvyat. Can Daniel Stein make a move to Daniel Kvyat there? Goes defensive to the inside line, you can try and hold it around the outside. Of the young Russian coming to turn one, so give it it's just about going to hold it up the inside line. He's going to keep it side by side. With Daniel Kvyat trying to take P3 off of the Russian, it's like Kvyat's just going to hold it around the outside, gets some good traction around the outside line. Daniel Kvyat keeps it in P3 for the time being. Still, we're gaining a solution now on the back. The Red Bull is how much more straight line speed we've got over Daniel Kvyat and the Red Bull, but coming now into turn three, just have to stick behind the Red Bull for a bit longer. And this is just allowing John Egvern and Fernando Alonso to pull away out in front. And you see on the mini map, they've really got what. At least a second gap already, maybe even a second and a half, two seconds already, with how much we are Daniel Kvyat's now having to de worry about defending from us to try and keep that P3 position. You know, that, that Red Bull does have pace over one lap, but pretty much like last season, season 3, 2016, they've got the pace over one lap, but they just haven't got the speed from the power unit to maintain that pace over a race distance. Now, coming through the second sector, they're actually getting purple there through the second sector. So, we have got some pretty good pace. So that's through to go purple. We actually went faster than Dan Alonso and Jean Eric Van as well. And of course, Daniel Kvyat in front of us, so. Finding some good pace through the second sector in this lap. Of course, I imagine that's just from all the slipstream we're getting off the back of this Red Bull. And of course, no DRS yet. That won't be activated until the start of the next lap. So it's also going to be about pure engine power and pure slipstream now to whether or not we can make a move on Danikovic. Gaining in the slipstream, but Danikovic just gets a good run out of the penultimate corner. Of course, where Perez spun in 2012, which will let Fernando Alonso win the race in the Ferrari. Now, coming around the final corner, we're getting some right, right behind the back of Danikovic. Once again, I'm getting a look at a good view once again back at Sebastian Vettel. Once again, we get a good run to the final corner. And Sebastian Vettel just has no answer for us behind. Now getting in switching once again on Danica Vick going to to the outside once again of the Russian coming down into turn one. Can make a move around the outside? We're definitely a lot further alongside. We outbreak ourselves. Goes to keep it side by side now with Danica Vick and hold it, get around the, hold it, around the outside. Which is then turn to the inside for the next corner. And we side by side still Kvyat on the racing line trying to hold it around the outside once again. Let's give it got the inside line. Kvyat once again just about managed to defend from us. So great defending so far from Danica Kvyat to keep it up in P3 ahead of us. We're in, we're in arguably a much faster goal. Once again trying to have a look at the inside. And look Kvyat coming into, into turn four just for fake look up the inside. See if we can put Danica Kvyat off. Now this is still got Sebastian Vettel right up behind us. And then not too further behind is also our teammate, Robbie Kibitzer, and then the leader of the Toyotas of Lewis Hamilton. I was just trying to use every bit of the curb we can, get a bit squirrely on the exit, it could be on the curbing. That's really not what we need. Lost, lost, lost maybe a tenth or two to Daniel Kvyat and all of that. So just trying to, I think I'm just overdriving the car now, trying to find a way past Daniel Kvyat. We're so much faster than this Red Bull over the lap. Just Kvyat just putting an amazing lap in qualifying to get it up into P3, but this time we will have DRS, which we're within a second of the rubber, which coming up now through the sixth sector, we are within a second of Danica Kvyat, it's about half a second behind him, so we'll definitely have DRS now, coming up to the detection point now, and see if Danica Kvyat really is going to have a hard time defending from us now, coming down this back straight, I mean if we don't get him down this straight, surely with a second bite of DRS down the start finish straight, we should get ahead of that Red Bull. But now we have DRS now, on the back of Danica Kvyat, of course Kvyat won't have DRS because he's not within a second, oh he's trying to make value in front, Sassin Vettel has DRS on the back of us, and then Robbie Kvyat's uh, behind Vettel and still one down the order. Now coming into final corner, just not quite close enough to make a move up the inside of Danica Kvyat. Looking around the final corner, now we get the second bite of DRS, get a good run out the final corner. 
That's going to be a drag race now down into Taiwan between ourselves. And Daniel Kavir could also once again go defensive to the inside line. Now goes going to breeze right around the outside of the Red Bull. Like it's standing still. They move aggressively to the inside now to defend from Daniel Kavir into Taiwan. Kavir tries to have a look around the outside, but he just has, has to admit defeat there. But now he goes Johnny Van forcing Flando Alonso off the track now. Trying to go around the outside of the two time world champion now coming up the street now into turn four. Confirm trying to make the move around the outside of Flando Alonso. Alonso on the inside line. So Alonso should have it into the corner, but Vettel going to hold it right around the outside. Van gets a bad bad on the racing line. Gets a better exit. Now Van moves in front of Fernando Alonso to move into the lead of what could be the final ever Malaysian Grand Prix. Of course, Alonso is going to be more motivated than ever to take the final victory. What could be the final victory here in Malaysia, of course, for Petronas, because the Petronas Tower is actually not too far from the track. Now, cutting a bit further on, I've taken a look now. Max Verstappen, of course, started in 20th and last. Now, he's coming up behind one of the Renaults of what I think is Daniel Ricciardo, who's so cleared the two Salvas and Carmen Jorda. Making a good view from the rear diffuser there. Of Max Verstappen now looking at Ricardo, who's pretty much in a no man's land between Max Verstappen behind and then the Torosso in front. He's actually got one of the Hasses sandwiched in between. I think that's actually Michelle McAbee because the Torosso running out really wide, coming back in front, just in front of Pierre Gasly. I think that's Carlos Sainz at the front of the Torosso. They ran out wide there. Now Gasly trying to hold it around the outside. Once again, Gasly getting forced off the track now by Carlos Sainz. Gasly trying to hold it on the inside line of his more experienced teammate coming up now into turn four. He's going to have it on the inside line. Can Sainz hold it around the outside? Off Pierre Gasly, Gasly on the inside line, Sainz isn't quite alongside, but Sainz is doing a good job of keeping it around the outside of his teammate, and keeping side by side, now coming up through the set station, he's going to be losing so much time, you see the Hass is already pulling away into the distance of what I think is Mick Schumacher, now coming up through the set station, they're still going side by side, I think Sainz had just managed to keep it in front, I can't quite see from the camera angle which one's in front, actually now that Sainz actually dropped behind, so Gasly with, some, with a good run actually managed to make the move on his teammate, now coming up now down into the hairpin, they're going to worry about now they're from down to Kvyat. They're cutting a bit further on now. We're actually into the lead of the Grand Prix. Cutting all the way onto La Paix. Of course, we haven't made our, our first stop of the race yet. So, fortunately, not much happening at the front. Just pretty much in a no man's land between ourselves with Vettel behind. And then Werner Alonso up in front. But we're coming in at the end of this lap to make our first stop of the race. And now coming down the, the start finish straight. Now coming up now into the final corner. It's going to go white swing right round. Right, and now coming into the pit lane now for our first stop of the race. And we're going on to another set of the super soft tyres. And I imagine that's Sebastian Vettel behind us. And Daniel Kvyat, of course, will be doing the same as well. Now, coming into the pit lane, it's going to pretty much be a pit lane battle here between Ferrari and between Williams. Now, coming into our pit box, now we need a good stop here from Williams. I know the Williams traditionally don't give us good pit stops when we need them. They're going to get back out in front. But the question is, has Sebastian Vettel got a worldly stop and jumped us? No, he hasn't. So, we've actually got quite a gap to the cars behind us. So, a really good pit stop from Williams, actually. That's really what we needed now to give ourselves a bit of breathing space. From Sebastian Vettel behind, we've actually now got one of the Red Bulls behind us. So, it's like Dana Kvyat has actually jumped Sebastian Vettel in the stops. Now, as we're going to say, one Dana Kvyat is, is ahead of Sebastian Vettel. So, a great stop there from Red Bull. Has managed to see Dana Kvyat jump Sebastian Vettel. So, now Dana Kvyat moves back up into P4. And now, look at Adrian Sutter trying to hold it up the inside line of Sebastian Vettel. I mean, fair play to Sutter. I mean, it's his final race. He might as well go for it. And that's following on board with now with Adrian Sutter. See if you actually keep. Relatively close to Spassi Vettel, of course, I mean, in Soto, in his final race, I mean, it's going to be hard for Salva to replicate the points finish that they achieved last race with Soto in 10th and Giovinazzi 11th, so elevated up into 9th in the constructive standings. And as you see, we can't even see Spassi Vettel on the same camera shot anymore, he's that far in front. Now we've got Lewis Hamilton in the Toyota, of course, that also made his stop on the lap we did as well, and they're gaining in the slip stream on the back of the Salva. And they're coming on down into the hairpins, how to try and make a move on the inside, now he just sticks behind the Salva of Adrian Soto. Now coming on now through the second, second stage, despite how slow the Sauber is with its lack of aerodynamics, there's just nothing that Hamilton could really do to make a move on the Sauber through here. He has to be patient and wait for the, the start finish straight or the back straight if he gets a good enough run. Now coming up now through this sweeping right hander, now coming up into what is the most difficult corner in Formula 1 according to many, that left hander. And now it's going to be Toyota Power with DRS versus Pure Cost with Power. Now it's going to be Sauber v, v Lewis Hamilton in the Toyota and Hamilton pulls to the inside. Of Adrian Sutter coming up now into the final corner. Can Sutter try and hold it around the outside of the 2008 World Champion? He'll try, even if he tries to hold it around the outside, there's just enough downforce on that side for Sutter to be able to hold it around the outside. And Sutter dropped down in another position, but I'm pretty sure he's just going to be enjoying his final race in Formula 1. So also on the set of soft tyres. So imagine Sutter trying to do a one stop, trying to get somewhere close to the points positions when I go defend from one of the houses coming up behind. Now, cutting a bit further on from that, we've actually got Max Verstappen now actually leading the Grand Prix. Also on the set of soft tyres as well. So Verstappen also try, probably trying to do a one-stop in the race as well. 
Now he's got Shane Van coming up right behind him. And of course, Fernando Alonso right up behind the back of the championship leader as well. Now coming up now into the final corner, Van gaining in the DRS on the back of Max Stappen, getting a great panning shot here. We're on the final hairpin. Verstappen keeps it in front, so Verstappen staying out for another lap. And Van actually getting a poor run out of the final corner. And actually dropped back quite a bit from Max Stappen in front. That could, get, that could leave Van vulnerable now to Fernando Alonso in the Mercedes. Again, Alonso trying to come in his tail on. Van goes defensive to the inside line. We've got Alonso trying to hold it around the outside of the championship leader. Around the outside, which then turn to the inside for the next corner as well. As Van also on a set of soft tyres, as noticed. Fernando Alonso on a set of super soft tyres, so it's crucial here that Alonso tries to get past. Trying to Van has to not ruin his second stint to the race because Alonso will be stopping earlier. He's going to a set of soft tyres at the end of the race. But coming up now into turn four, Alonso is just going to stick behind Johnny Van for a bit longer. Now cutting all the way now onto lap 16. Pretty much nothing happening once again. We're just in this no man's land behind Fernando Alonso. And we're just in front of Spassi Vettel. So keeping the pace, the pace pretty even to Spassi Vettel. Now we've got some yellow flag though up in front. There's the thing there's a car pulled off the inside. And Sean Eric Van is out of the Grand Prix. The championship leader, Sean Eric Van, has retired from the Grand Prix. Don't believe it. Well, right and look. For Sean Eric Van once again. It all just seems to be going wrong now for Sean Eric Van. Now we're going to dive into the pits. I did this lap. There's a Apprehending a safety guard, Williams was expecting a safety guard, Kissy coming now. So we can get what could be a free pit stop. Looks like Fernando Alonso in front of us. That's the same idea as well, and it's coming to the pits on the same lap as us. And, uh, we, and Alonso actually gets holding the pit box there for us because we, thought, we haven't even made our pit our stop yet, so we're not going to get out in front of the two time world champion. And making our final stop to go into a set of the soft tyres now, and these soft tyres will take us to the end of the Grand Prix. And imagine that Fernando Alonso is on the set of soft tyres as well. They come down to turn one, there's going to be any traffic holding us up behind. Coming down to turn one, I can't see any cars. And Alonso, that's going to set of medium tyres. So Alonso clearly, has Alonso not got any sets of soft tyres left? But Mercedes clearly don't think they could get to the end on the set of soft tyres, but on the set of mediums. They're cutting a bit further on now, looking a bit further back at one of the midfield bats. And Camille Kobiachi now getting in slit sheen on the back of Nico Hulkenberg. Coming down to final corner, Kobiachi is trying to go around the outside now. Of Nico Hulkenberg coming up now into the final corner. Can we battle the pitch right now? Actually, no, we're coming into the pit lane, actually. It's going to be side by side. It's going to be side by side in the pit lane. Kobiachi has been forced into the pit lane by Nico Hulkenberg. He's going to be, he's going to back out here. Coming into the pit lane, it's going to be Kobiachi who backs out of it. And lets Hulkenberg go back through. But now Kobiachi has been forced into the pit lane by the Renault. This could have ruined his race. Is he going to stop? He's going to drive straight through. I mean, the pit crew out from him. I mean, I mean, that's pretty much a last second decision. I mean, Toyota might as well change his tyres whilst he's in the pit lane. I mean, he's not going to lose anything. That's going to come back in front. Is he going to get out in front of Nico Hulkenberg? In the Renault can't see Hulkenberg. So Kirby actually has come out in front of Nico Hulkenberg. So is the Haas of Lance Stroll. And the top one of the Taurus as well come out in front of Nico Hulkenberg. So a terrible stop there from Renault. They've just seen their number one driver lose three positions to... And, there's, and now Hulkenberg's going to have to fight to gain back these positions. And they're cutting all the way onto lap 22. We're still in this no man's land. But saying that, Sebastian Vettel, now caught right behind us. See Sebastian Vettel filling up on Mary's all over the back of us now. And Vettel, he's seeing the opportunity now to go for the win. Because Alonso on a set of mediums, so he's just all the road in front of us. So theoretically, me and Sebastian Vettel should be going faster than that Mercedes AMG up in front. And they're coming up now through this tight right hander. Coming up now, let's get a pretty good run to their defending line to the inside. We'll play away quite a bit from Sebastian Vettel because first of all, we'll have the DRS now on the back of us. And that's going to be a BMW Power V, Ferrari Power with DRS. And now imagine Ferrari had the engine now turned up into 11. Can't quite see, we're coming out around the final corner again. Once again, this nice padding shot around the final hairpin. Trying to defend from Sebastian Vettel once again. Now Vettel will have a second part of DRS now to try and make a move on us. Coming down in the start finish and Vettel gaining in the switch. Once now Vettel pulls to our inside line. Vettel going to try and make a move down the outside. Going to be side by side with the far time world champion. Coming down to turn one. Trying to hold it around the outside. Sebastian Vettel but Vettel there. Gives very late under braking. And now Vettel makes the move up to Peter. But we're right up behind still the back. Of Sebastian Vettel the far time world champion in the Ferrari. Now we need a good run here. I'll turn two. Vettel to make a move. But Vettel there is already pulling away from us. So that Ferrari was so much more speed in this. I don't know what Vettel's found in this final stint of the race because we can imagine for the first 20 or so laps of the race. We we're keeping a pretty good gap to Sebastian Vettel. Well, imagine if Ferrari have just turned their engine up to 11 now to try and go for the victory of this race. And they're coming a bit further on. Vettel's now catching up to the back of Fernando Alonso. So Alonso on that set of medium tyres just really not finding the pace that he needs. Of course, the medium tyres won't wear out as quick as Vettel's soft tyres, but because with how durable the tyres are, it's not really making that much of a difference. Now Vettel gaining into the final corner, not quite getting enough on the back. Off Fernando Alonso now coming down the start finish. Once again, Sebastian Vettel will now have a second bite of DRS to try and make a move. Off Fernando Alonso. Now coming down the start finish. Alonso goes defensive to the inside line. Vettel goes even more to the inside now. Okay, try and make a move. Same move on us. So we did on the inside. Off Fernando Alonso. Alonso trying to hold it around the outside. So of course, it's going to mean so much to Mercedes and to Petronas if Alonso can take a fight victory. But he gets a poor run there through turn one. And now Alonso drops down behind 
Fight time watch up is Sebastian Vettel. Alonso's got to use, pull out something pretty special here. You've also tried and take the lead back from Sebastian Vettel. Now cutting all the way now onto the final lap of the Grand Prix. Lap 28, we've, we've fallen away quite a bit from Fernando Alonso, of course, because BMW just turning our engine down because there's no much fighting, no point fighting Fernando Alonso. We just couldn't get close enough to him and go down a clear behind us. And quite some way behind us in P4, so there's not any challenge. Uh, Williams just turned our engine down. Now looking up at Sebastian Vettel, now it's coming up down the back straight for the final time. We've got one of the Sabers up in front of him because they're not going to pose any threat. So that Sabers, whichever Sabers it is, is going to finish on the lead lap. And now Sebastian Vettel coming up to the finish line. And now Sebastian Vettel wins the Malaysian Grand Prix. Also the first victory he took here for Malaysia. So he takes his first victory for Ferrari here in Malaysia. And takes what the final could be the final victory in Malaysia with Fernando Alonso coming home. In second, but I mentioned that Petronas and Mercedes will still be quite happy with that. And we round off the podium for Williams in third. Now looking at Reeves Benny, we're getting very happy with Sebastian Vettel driving me. Vettel was just absolutely on it in that final stint of the race. I don't know what pace he was hiding for this race, but Sebastian Vettel takes victory in what could be the final ever Malaysian Grand Prix and takes, more crucially, 20 points out of his teammates joining the advantage championship lead. Of course, Vettel will still be leading the championship, but his gap at the top has been pretty much halved by Vettel winning this race. Taking a look at the race results, Sebastian Vettel take victory for Ferrari, a second and a half clear Fernando Alonso in second, and we round off the podium for Williams in third. Daniel Cavia finishes in fourth, with Pascal Valen getting up into P5 for Mercedes, with our teammate Robert Kubica in sixth after doing a one stop. Max Verstappen comes home in seventh, starting last. Lewis Hamilton in eighth as the leader of the Toyotas with Camille Kobayashi coming home in ninth after getting forced into the pit lane by Nico Hulkenberg. Lance Stroll finishes where he started in P10, with teammate Mick Schumacher getting up into 11th, and Pierre Gasly riding off the points in 12th for Toro Rosso. Nico Hulkenberg finishes in 13th for Renault, with Carlos Sainz in 14th and the second of the Toro Rosso's, Ria Hayanta dropping down to 15th in the McLaren, with teammate Carmen Jordan coming home in 16th in the second of the McLarens. Adrian Suttle finishes what could be his final race on the lead lap and ahead of teammate Giovinazzi, with Daniel Ricciardo and Jean-Luc Verne retiring from the Grand Prix. With Verne's non-finish, Sebastian Vettel now moves to within a race victory of his teammate Jean-Luc Verne, 18 points behind the Frenchman, with Fernando Alonso now moving back up into third, Two points clear of us on 150 points to our 148. Pascal Verlein remains in fifth, 16 points behind us, with Daniel Kvyat in sixth on 111 points. Robbie Kibitzas in seventh with 92, six points clear, Max Verstappen is in eighth on 86. Arnold Stroll is in ninth on 66, two points clear of Lewis Hamilton who rounds off the top 10 on 64. Miss Schumacher moving up into 11th on 33, on, better, on virtue of better result, knocking Sebastian Boemi down to 12th, is also on 33. Nick Hulkenberg remains in 13th on 31 points, with Kirby now getting up into 14th on 26, ahead now of both of the Toro Rossos, of Carlos Sainz and Pierre Gasly on 24 and 22 points. Daniel Ricciardo dropped down to 17th with 21 points, with Esteban Ocon in 18th on 18 points, Adrian Sutil 19th with 3, Giovinazzi in 20th with 2, Carmen Jordan also on 2 even though it says 1, with Ria Harianto rounding off the point scorers, and just Thomas Aron and Nico Carey on 0 points. Moving on to the constructor standings, and Ferrari have a 60 point lead over Mercedes on 342 points to Mercedes 282. Williams are in pretty much in no man's land of their own in 3rd, on 244 points, with Red Bull in 4th on 197. Haas remain in 5th on 127 points, only 19 points clear now of Toyota, who are in 6th on 108. Renault are in 7th on 52 points, 6 points clear of Torosso, who are on 46. Sauber remain in 9th on 5 points, with McLaren Honda in 10th with 3. So that's been the Malaysian Grand Prix. Thanks for watching, remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the race, subscribe if you're new, leave a comment down below, vote for your driver of the day with the polling that will be in the description. 
Also, check out the wiki, which will be in the description as well, in the third line of the description for the latest news on this season, a look back at previous seasons, and a sneak peek as what's coming up in the future. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.